What is up heroes, this is Minute Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, we got bodied by Alice. We chose to ally in the AB game, and we got the Alice game over when she showed up out of nowhere. She recovered from, I guess, uh, Radical Nine. Radical Nine, wow. Sorry guys, it's been a long, long day. And, um... She recovered from Radical 6 earlier than expected, made her way into the AV game, and betrayed us, and we got absolutely bodied for it. So, in this time around, we are going to choose Betray, and hope that it goes a little bit better. Okay, Luna, I'm sorry I led you astray before, but this time... This time, we're gonna betray. You might think I'm a horrible person for a moment, but when you realize I really just have psychic powers, and I'm actually looking out for you, then, then you'll come around, I promise. Luna and I stepped out of the AB room. Why? What happened to it's not fair to betray someone who isn't voting? Well, that's the thing. We're not dealing with somebody who isn't voting. I thought... There was nothing I could think of to say. Even I didn't really understand why I'd picked Betray instead. And it almost felt unconscious. Like some other part of my mind was making the decision. Perhaps I'd been possessed by some sort of evil spirit that had moved my finger to the Betray button against my will. <laughs> right, well, we should go see the results. Really? We already know what they are. It's just simple math. The look in her eyes was more painful than any punch I'd ever taken. I turned away and almost ran toward the projector. Anything to get away from those eyes. Oof. I know. Never, never want to go against Luna. Alright, so let's take at the results. Is, um... You know, is the game going to do the usual sucker punch of... Hey, I know it was this way in the other timeline, but it's totally opposite now. Betray, betray. Okay. So it's a round of betrays across the board. And I believe that's consistent with the last one, obviously, our own voting aside. Interesting. So now we'll finally have the opportunity to live and confront Alice ourselves. What? It wasn't possible. I blinked, rubbed my eyes, and looked again. No. How can Alice's vote be betray? That's not possible. But there she is. Uh, Alice. She was standing inside the second room from the left. The room that should have been empty. Why? My mind was still reeling. Where had she come from? As I was trying to form a sentence, she began to move toward us. From around me, I heard a chorus of muted grass, gasps. It seemed we were united in our surprise and confusion. Alice drew to a stop in front of me and glanced up at the display. Mm -hmm. yeah, I thought you'd get an easy couple points, huh? I mean, to be honest, Alice doesn't have much of an incentive to betray herself, right? I don't remember, is she at six points or is it us at six points? I think it is us. That's pretty stealthy of her, but I, I mean, it's not like allying and having us ally really hurts her, right? Not so easy when you have to look your victim in the eye, is it? Coward. Me? A coward? You got some balls saying that to me after you picked Betray. Why are you even here? You gave me the antivirus, didn't you? Temyoji told me. Thank you. I mean that from the bottom of my heart, honestly. But, but you should still be under the effects of the anesthetic. Yes, well, I still am, a bit. I have a throbbing headache, and I can barely stand. It's horrible. I 
I'm more resistant to anesthetics than most people. A result of my training. I have a feeling Zero Senior knew that. That is interesting to know. They gave me way more than the standard dose of that gas when they kidnapped me. Interesting that Zero would know that. In any event, a few minutes ago I woke up in the infirmary. Temyoji explained what was going on, and I got here as fast as I could. So you showed up right after we'd gone into the AB room? Yes. Right in the nick of time, too. About 10 seconds before the deadline, as I recall. You did that just so you could betray us? Right. What? Don't I get to do that? I mean, it turned out to be the right thing to do, didn't it? I mean... <laughs> it's weird because all these timelines are kind of happening concurrently, right? But at the same time, like, this is sequential for us. So... Realistically, our initial instinct was to do the opposite. So... It turned out okay now, but in only a weird time loop sort of sense. You two chose Betray. If I'd stayed back there, I'd have lost two points. So you're saying it was self-defense? Yes. <laughs> you're full of crap. Self-defense, I don't know. You chose Betray because you wanted out. You had six BP. If I picked Ally, you would have had nine. That's what you were trying to do, right? So what if I was? Are you serious? You would have killed me. Look, I only have one BP. You were this close to murdering me. Yikes. Just admit it. You were planning to kill me so you could escape. D don't be stupid. Nah, that's, that's totally it. I knew you'd choose Betray. There was... Tell the truth. That is the truth. Why am I the only one getting the third degree here? Look at those results. Two other people just tried to kill someone. Yeah, but even if they did that, that doesn't absolve you from doing so yourself, Alice, right? Fi and Dio. Yes. If Dio had chosen ally, Fi would have killed Temyoji. I will say there's a very big difference between these situations, though, right? Choosing Betray out of self-defense is different from when you have the expectation the other person is going to choose Betray, right? So if you really think there's a good chance the other person is going to choose Betray, then picking Betray yourself, even in the setting of, well, the other person only has one point, is not as murderous as it is in our case with Alice, right? From Alice's perspective, Sigma and Luna are going into an AB game with one and five points respectively, and they are under the impression Alice will not be participating in automatically choosing Ally. From that point of view, there's no incentive for Sigma and Lunas to choose Betray. They would gain three points, sure, as opposed to two points, but for, Lu for Luna, that doesn't matter. She's required to play the game twice before she can get to nine anyways, and Sigma already has to play the game at least three times anyways, so there's no point in him going for Betray, or going for the pair of Sigma and Luna going for Betray over... Um, over Ally. Maybe you could think that they're worried about Alice getting to 9 first and they would want to intentionally bring her down, but from the conversation leading up to that point, I don't think that was something they even considered. Yeah, although Alice might have considered it would cross their mind. But the, in all likelihood, from Alice's perspective, Sigma and Luna were much, much more likely to pick Ally. So picking Betray in that context is definitely more devious, definitely more concerning than in, for example, Fi's situation where she has a lot more suspicion that Dio and Temyoji are going to pick Betray. It's not quite as murderous, right? And if she chose an ally, Dio would have killed her. Yeah. 
I don't want to be rude, but it looks like Clover and Kay tried to trick one another. Not that it seems to have worked. If either one had chosen ally, the other one would have 9 BP right now. I turned to look at the results again. Before, I'd only been looking at my own. I hadn't realized that there was only one word, all across the roster. Betray. Whatever trust we'd managed to build had fallen apart. Everyone was suspicious of everyone else. Had it been the bombs? Or had it been something else? Whatever the reason, if it kept up, we never managed to escape. We'd be trapped in a cycle of zero point rounds for the rest of our lives. Something had to be done. I closed my eyes and took a deep breath. Oh, is this where we have to draw upon some knowledge from another timeline? Alright guys, pay attention. You've probably already all figured this out, but we can't keep going like this. If we don't start being a little more trusting, we're never going to get out of here. We need to work together. I might as well have been talking to a wall. My apologies, Sigma. But I need to think on something for a bit. I would appreciate being left alone. Okay. I'll be leaving too. Things are getting a little too intense here for my delicate constitution. Sorry. Dio. Well, in that case... <laughs> you too, Fi? Yeah. Sorry. Without another word, she turned and left the warehouse. Of course, now everybody's going their own individual ways, and the next time we find everybody, somebody's gonna be dead. Dio and Kay quickly followed suit. See? There's your answer. Everyone, in the end, everyone's just thinking about themselves. So I would appreciate it if you could not treat me like I'm the only villain here. Ah, yeah, yes, you're one of many villains. Still just as guilty, if not guiltier than before. Come on, Clover, let's go. Uh, hold on, I'm coming. Are you feeling okay? I was really worried, you know. I watched them walk away, Clover practically jumping with delight to have Alice back. Before long, they reached the yellow door and disappeared beyond it. All that's left is Temyoji, Quark, and Luna, I think. Everyone's gone. You aren't going to leave too? No. Are you sure? I chose Betray. I know. But I still believe in you, Sigma. I think your hand must have just slipped or something. <laughs> Come on, Luna. Right? My chest hurt, and when I blinked, I felt something hot and wet prick the corners of my eyes. Luna, I... I bit my lip. Before I could think of anything to say, the metallic rumble of the doors closing echoed through the warehouse. The Ambidex gates have closed, yada yada yada, star round explanation. As many times as we want, huh? Yes, as long as we have the star keys. That means we can keep playing the AB game over and over too. Um, Sigma, could, could you show me your bracelet? Why? Do you remember what Zero Jr. said? As soon as the gates close, your colors get all shuffled up, all that jazz. Yeah, I remember. Um, let's see here. I'm a cyan pair. What about you? I'm a magenta pair. I wonder what the others are. Could be anything, I suppose. 
We won't know until we have a look. Hmm. We've got about... 80 minutes until the next set of chromatic doors open. So, what should we do now? Everyone else has gone off on their own. Yeah. Phys physically and emotionally. Yeah, ain't that the truth. I really don't like how this is going. It won't matter how many times we repeat the AB game if nobody trusts anybody else. We'll never be able to get out of here. Maybe it would help if we all had a common goal. Something to unite our hearts and minds. I like the idea, Lelouch. <laughs> yeah, but we've already got something like that. We all want to get out of here. That seems like a pretty clear goal to me, but everybody chose Betray, including me. Well, what if we have an enemy? An enemy? Yes. A common foe. Like the person who set the bombs, for instance. Yeah, but even then, if we were to assume that that's the goal, well, the, the, the top culprit is still one of us, right? After coming back from the lab, I told her about the bomb while she gave Alice and Quark the Accelivir. Hmm. Yeah, that, that might work. If we can figure out which one of us planted those bombs, then everyone else would work together against them. Right. But how do we figure out who it is? Well, do you have any clues? Um, hmm, clues, huh? I mean, we know about the bombs from the other timelines, but that's right. The memory card. I pulled it out of my pocket and held it out toward her. What's this? Oh, I am I'm eager to see what's on this memory card. I told you, a memory card. It was under the bomb we found in the lab. I think whoever said the bomb dropped it. I wonder, is it going to hold the passcodes for the other bombs? Because we also know where to find the device for defusing them. I think it was in the... Uh... Oh man, there's like that purple room with like the reactor and stuff. Was it the control room? Really? Yeah. I don't know what's on it though. We couldn't find any kind of memory card reader. Oh. I guess we can't really use it then. Well, we can look, right? For some place to put it. Oh. Wait a second. You know what? I think I might have seen something. Huh? Yes, I remember. The infirmary. I saw it when I was searching the infirmary with Dio and Quark. There was a memory card just like that one. Then... Yes. I think we can see what's on it. Oh, that precious smile. The excitement in her voice. The computer there should be able to read it. Alright. Well, I'm excited to give it a look. Luna and I exploded in the infirmary, nearly running into Alice, Clover, and Temyoji. Quark was there as well, of course, but he was just as we left him, asleep on the bed. Hmm... What are you doing here? I opened my mouth to retort, then thought better of it. If I really wanted people to start trusting each other, well, real change starts at home. Ain't that the truth, right? Lead by example, enact the, the change you want to see. As quickly as I could, I explained the second bomb in the memory card, and how we'd come to the infirmary in hopes that we could discover the contents of the ladder. Uh, okay. Then stick it in already. Go ahead. Right. Just as Luna had said, there was a small slot under the screen, exactly the right size to fit a memory card. Within moments, the screen was filled with what appeared to be random letters. Passcodes, passcodes, passcodes! What is this? So the first question is, well, what is this, right? 
Um, the first thing that jumps out to me is that there are two lines that are just repeated over and over that don't appear to change at all from my initial glance, right? Is there anything to note in them? Uh, it doesn't look like it. Off the top of my head. Hmm. Hmm. Six rows, 22 letters each. Yeah, it looks like the odd rows use one set of letters and the even rows use another set. In other words, the first two rows just repeat. Yeah. Is this some kind of code or something? It doesn't look random to me. I think there might be a pattern, I just don't know what it is. Yeah, I don't see it either immediately. Was there anything else on there? No, it doesn't look like it. So all we get is this gibberish? Hey Alice, you haven't said anything for a while. What's up? Does any of this look familiar to you, Clover? Um... What do you mean? Have you seen something like this before? Maybe during your training? Training? Ah! This is... So you do recognize it. So it's a code that clearly Alice and Clover are familiar with from their training. Um... Hmm... I'm trying to think, if there is some sort of a code to it, what might that code be, right? I don't know. Alright, knock it off, you two. How about you share it with the rest of the class? Alice sighed and stretched her neck from side to side. I believe this is an encoded message from a terrorist organization. Oh, might that terrorist organization be the one that Dio is a member of? What? Yeah, they call themselves the Myrmidons. Myrmidons. For some reason, I felt like I'd heard that name before. What are the Myrmidons? But simply, they're a bunch of thugs who are trying to destroy or dismantle most of human civilization. So, this thing we're looking at... You think it's theirs? Well, they have a number of different codes, but I do think this is one of them. Then the bomb... Probably Dio, then. It was set by one of the Myrmidons, wasn't it? Yes. Well, I can't say for sure, of course, but it seems likely. Uh, darn, I've got a ton of questions for you. But let me start with this one. What the heck does that thing say? I don't know. What's kind of interesting, though, is how can you recognize that a code is a Myrmidon code without really knowing that code? Right? Like, I can't imagine I would look at this and be like, ah, this is clearly a Myrmidon code, not a, I don't know, insert other organization code. Maybe there are just, like, standard patterns each of them uses with regards to, like, repeating lines and all that, but I feel like that partially defeats the purpose of having a code, right? I don't know. What? How am I supposed to decode it? I don't have the key. Ah, that's the big difference. You can understand that there is a code system, you can know how that code works, but if you require a key, then, well, if you don't have the key, you can't do anything with it. Without a key, it would take literally hundreds of years to decode. What about you, Clover? Well, if Alice doesn't know how, I sure don't. The real question is, what would the key be, right? There was that zero bomb password we got from Dio in another timeline, but... I see. Hmm. 
Not much we can do then. We can come back to that code stuff later. I've got another question. Alice, Clover, who the heck are you? Why do you know about this code? That's... You told me your job was to eliminate enemies of the state, or something like that. Just what the heck kind of a job is that? I think it's time you told us what you do. I agree. Sorry, but I can't. Why not? Because you might be one of them. You might be the person who set the bomb. That's idiotic. Of course I'm not. Really? And where's your proof? For all I know, you're my enemy. I can't tell you anything. I'm not your enemy. I'm your ally. I'm your friend. I just want all of us to get out of here. Just please tell us. Please. We need to find out who did this so we can all escape. But we have too little information. We need your help. Fine. If you won't tell us about yourself, then just tell us about the Myrmidons. What else do you know about them? I'm sorry. Before I could blink, she leapt up and run out of the room. Aw, oh, come on, Alice. Hey, wait, Alice! She's gonna end up dead. I took off after her. How long are you going to keep following me? Until you tell me what you know. Then why don't you just ask Clover? Clover? You already know she works with me. Well, yeah. Then why don't you... I wanted to hear it from you. Why? That's a good question. Remember the crew quarters? Or this garden? We got paired up for two separate rounds. That means I've spent more time with you than anybody else here. Maybe that's it. I guess I'm just curious about you. What are you talking about? <laughs> Alice is like, Sigma, are you interested in me? She spun around to hide it, but I caught a blush of red on her cheeks, of course. We walked down the path to where it ended next to the pond. Knows how to get that info out of her. I stayed silent. Alice sat down on the bench. We gazed at the smooth surface of the pond for several long minutes before she began to speak. You hear the music. Things are about to get real. We're about to get real deep. You don't hate me? What? Why? I... I tried to kill you. You mean in the AV game? Yes. I was so scared. Who wouldn't be? Kidnapped and locked up? Forced to play some sort of bizarre game? And then we found that bomb. I know I probably sounded calm, but... As soon as we found that thing, all I wanted to do was run away from it as fast as I could. Things just went downhill from there. What do you mean? I remember hearing that Quark had collapsed, and running to the infirmary with everyone else. When I got there, I realized I couldn't understand what anyone was saying. And everything looked... Uh, I don't know how to describe it. It was like watching a video on Fast Forward. Only it was real. Then I started to feel like... It's hard to explain. I guess you could say I didn't feel like I was myself. And it only got worse. That was probably the Radical Six. Yes. I think so. I don't remember much after that. But when I woke up in the infirmary, suddenly all that fear was back. So I... 
All I could think about was getting out of this place as fast as I could. It never even crossed my mind that it could kill you. God help me, even if it had, I don't think I would have cared. Ah, the classic, I'm scared of the person I was. The person I could be. The person I can't control, right? See? I'm horrible. You hate me, don't you? Just do it. What? Do what? Kill me. Get it over with. What the heck, Alice? I'm not going to kill you. I don't even hate you. You're lying. I could have killed you. I would have killed you. Come on, calm down. No one's killing anyone. A single tear rolled down Alice's cheek. Aww. Then another, and another, leaving shining lines across her face. When I reached out, I saw her tense just slightly. Slowly, I brushed my thumb across her cheek and off, taking her tears with it. Oof, we're getting intimate over here. Why are you doing this? You know, you kind of remind me of my father. Uh-oh, red flag alert. <laughs> That's who you were after, right? The people who killed your dad? Yes. Do they have anything to do with the Myrmidons? Probably. Will you promise not to tell Clover that I cried? Huh, <laughs> come on. If you keep your mouth shut, I'll tell you what you want to know. About myself? And about the Myrmidons. Deal? Sure. My lips are sealed. Really? Yeah, but my mind is connected to other timelines, in which I haven't promised to keep my lips sealed, so really? You know, Sigma's the real sneaky one here. What crime? I don't remember any crime. Good. Alright then. Here we go, guys. Alice took a deep breath and began. Knew a bunch of uh, narrative was coming, so I had to take a little sip of water. <laughs> my father is Egyptian, but my mother is French. They met while my mother was in Egypt on vacation, and married shortly after. When I was there, or when I was three, we all moved to the U.S. My father was a scientist, and his field was cloning. He was recruited by an American lab, which was why he moved. Both of my parents had used English around me from the time I was born, so I didn't have any problems adapting to life in the United States. By my ninth birthday, we'd been there for six years. That was when it happened. In the middle of the day, my mother showed up at school. Her eyes were red and puffy, but she didn't say anything to me on the drive home. When we arrived, there were several policemen there to meet us. My father had always been a very punctual man, and when dinner time came and went with no sight of him, even I began to realize something terrible had happened. It wasn't until several years later that I finally learned the truth. My father's lab had been attacked by terrorists, and he had been kidnapped. For the rest of my childhood, my mother raised me by herself. Interesting. So he had been kidnapped. Not attacked. Killed. But, um, but kidnapped. So then the question is, this father of Alice, who is involved in cloning research, is this the same father figure that gave rise to Kay? That worked with the old lady, who is, you know, the mother figure for Kay, right? How is this all connected? Well, we're, we're establishing those connections. For the rest of my childhood, my mother raised me by herself. I didn't realize it then, but it must have been incredibly difficult for her, as a single mother alone in a country where any relatives were a transatlantic flight away. She did her best not to let me see it, but every so often when she thought she was alone, the mask would fall away and in every line of her face I could see exhaustion and loneliness. As much as I missed my father, it was those moments that made me wish more than anything that he'd never been taken. Fortunately, I was an excellent student, and did especially well in math. I earned a full-ride scholarship straight out of high school and spent the next several years studying. 
After graduation, I took a job with the Department of Defense, hoping that they might have the resources to help me look for my father. I was immediately assigned to the Special Office of Internal Security. Their purpose is to investigate and sometimes deal with terrorist organizations and other serious threats to the state. I could tell my mother wasn't happy about my decision, but she chose to remain silent about it. Eventually, I learned that the terrorist organization that had taken my father was none other than the Myrmidons. Although at the time, that name didn't mean anything to me. They were suspected of human cloning. Specifically, it was thought that they had been using cloning techniques to copy their most useful members and expand their ranks. The Myrmidons apparently believed that they could use cloning to create a new race of humans. Now, at last, I knew the reason for my father's abduction. This is an interesting context, right? Because we heard from Dio before, who's a member of the Myrmidons, that it's kind of about like saving the world and creating a new uh, race, uh, like a saved race or, or something like that. But this was the mechanism for doing so. And Dio was sent to investigate slash invade this nonary game in this facility. And if this is the facility K grew up in, right? Then that kind of ties those things together in, in, a, in a new way. Commander of the Myrmidons is a man named Left. We know his name and his gender, but not his appearance or his age. The Myrmidons are closely associated with a cult known as Free the Soul. We believe that Free the Soul provides their funding. But trying to pin any kind of misdeeds on the cult's leader, a man named Brother, is like trying to nail Jello to a wall. Brother is supposed to be fairly advanced in years, and rumor says, rumors say he's so old he can't even get out of bed. Unfortunately, his mind seems to be as sharp as ever. At that point, I hit a wall. I knew the Myrmidons had been behind my father's kidnapping, but that was all I could learn about them. Then, one day I got a tip that some of them were hiding in a building in the Nevada desert. I headed out immediately. On the way there, my car had some engine trouble and stalled out. I was trying to decide what to do when an SUV appeared out of nowhere. I'll give you one guess who was behind the steering wheel. Clover. That was the first time we met. There were four other people in the car with her, and when I asked them what they were doing, I got what was just about the last answer I'd expected. They told me they'd been locked up inside of the very building I'd been on my way to investigate and that they were currently in pursuit of the people who had kidnapped them in the first place. My priorities shifted very quickly. After a short discussion, I convinced them to allow me to come along. My hope was to find the people they were chasing, who I was certain were Myrmidons. In the end, however, we were unable to track them down. In fact, I still don't know where they might have gone. Eventually, I took Clover and her companions to SOIS headquarters. We decided that involving the police would only complicate things. After some questioning, it was determined that the people who had investigated this particular event were not connected to the Myrmidons. Okay. We did, however, discover that the mysterious disappearance and subsequent reappearance of several children nine years prior was connected to Free the Soul. Gotcha. So that's a pretty big deal, right? That was the very first notary game. Clover, the one we played in 999, was technically the second. Hmm. There was also a sixth person in the SUV, although they weren't riding in it, per se. A middle-aged man, who I'll just call H for now, had been bound and placed in the trunk. I'm trying to remember, was that Ace? Or was it someone else? According to the other four, he had been behind the disappearance of the children nine years earlier. Yeah. We also learned that his pharmaceutical company, a major player on the world stage, was effectively controlled by Free the Soul. More specifically, I suppose H was a member of Free the Soul and very committed to their cause. So why had he kidnapped all those children? Apparently it had been part of an experiment designed to test the ability of certain people to access what's called the morphogenetic field. I don't imagine you've ever heard of it before, so I'll try and give you a quick rundown. 
Simply put, these people can access a sort of field that allows their consciousness to resonate with the consciousnesses of certain other people. To be honest, it might be simpler to just call it telepathy. The SOIS had heard of this particular ability before and had actually used it in a number of investigations, so I wasn't surprised to learn of its existence. I was shocked, however, to learn that these experiments had been carried out by a member of Free the Soul. If that was the case, then Brother must have known about it. The thought of him discovering a way to control and harness that power was terrifying. It wasn't too long after the incident in Nevada that another tip about the Myrmidons crossed my desk. This time, it claimed that the Myrmidons intended to launch a large-scale biological terrorist attack. My bosses decided that we needed more agents to deal with a threat of that magnitude, and Clover was recruited. Because she'd been a test subject in H's experiment, we knew she had the ability to access the morphogenetic field, and we wanted to put that ability to use. After several months of training, she was sent on her first mission. She would be tasked with the infiltration and investigation of a Myrmidon cloning lab. I was assigned to be her commanding officer. Oh, and of course, I can't even believe I didn't connect this earlier. Um, cloning makes a lot of sense for why K has Sigma's face, right? So Sigma was cloned at some point, and that's why we have K and Sigma in their current state. Of course, we don't know which is the original, etc. But, well, presumably, presumably the Sigma we play as, but who knows? I hope that our investigation might also give me a lead of my father's whereabouts. At last I had a chance to find out what had happened to him. I wouldn't let that chance pass me by. Perhaps that was what kept me from noticing the truth. The whole operation was a trap. The lab was fake, and Clover was captured almost immediately. I got there as fast as I could, but when I arrived the building was only an empty shell. All of the conspirators who had pretended to be researchers, and the like, had already fled. I searched frantically for Clover until at last in a basement room I found her. She had been tied to a chair, but on the floor next to her was another body. Oh boy. It was my father. What? He looked as if he'd just been dumped there, and when I got to him, his body was already cold. He was covered in dark, ugly bruises. It wasn't until later that I learned he had died from ruptured organs and internal bleeding. Oh, that had to have been awful. They'd beaten him to death. As soon as Clover had been captured, a Myrmidon in a mask had come to visit her. He said that unless she wanted to end up like my father, she would leave them alone and tell her masters at the SOIS to do likewise. In retrospect, they must have known who I was and who my father was. That was why they'd killed him. Perhaps they thought they were sending a message to me. Or that once he was gone, I'd lose my reason for chasing them. They were very, very wrong. I took Clover with me and left. I tried to console myself with the fact that I had at least been able to save her. Sometime later, I received a call from the coroner. He told me there was something I needed to see. There in the morgue was my father, cold and pale on a steel table. I could barely stand to look at him, but the coroner insisted. On his arm were two rows of numbers, comprised of eights and nines. It took me a moment to recognize my father's handwriting. He had carved them into his own skin. On his chest was another message, but they were letters this time, not numbers. Not many, just enough to make a short sentence. I love you, Alice. Holy cow, that's deep. I broke down crying, right there in the morgue. They were the first tears I'd shed since the operation had started, and there was no stopping them. There would be no forgiveness. Not for the monsters who put my father through this. They destroyed my family. I would make them pay, even if I had to die to do it. That night I made a promise to myself. I would avenge my father. It didn't take long to figure out that the numbers he'd written were latitude and longitude. They pointed to a chemical factory that had been disguised as an abandoned building. Further investigation revealed that it was the mother load we'd been looking for, the headquarters of the Myrmidons. I think my father must have known how things would turn out. 
Knowing he was going to die, he'd written the directions to our enemy's fortress on his own body. He'd sacrificed too much for me to waste this opportunity with recklessness. This time our operation would succeed. This time I wouldn't let my excitement put Clover or any of my other agents in danger. So we took our time, we gathered information, we did our research, and we planned. Finally, we were ready. December 25th, 2028 was going to be the day we finally set foot inside the Miradon stronghold. But then, on the 22nd, only three days before the operation was scheduled to begin, a man in a gas mask appeared. So you inhaled that gas, passed out, and then woke up here in the AB room? Yes. Well, there it is. Everything that's happened with the Mirrodons in me. It is really nice to have that background. And holy cow, what a what a heart-wrenching story for Alice. What a what a traumatizing background, really. She's been through a lot. I left a few of the details out, of course, but you get the idea. Yeah. Thanks. She gave me a sad sort of smile and stood up. We should go back. Not yet. Your story explained a lot, but there's still one big question. Which is... Who here is a Myrmidon? One of us planted the bombs. And based off the code we found, it's pretty clear that person is a Myrmidon. Right? Yes. And I agree that we need to figure out who they are. What do you propose we do? Well, that's what I wanted to ask you about. Do you have any clues? Clues? This is so interesting. This is so interesting. Everybody's connections are starting to come together, right? Clover, um, with the original, or with the second nonary game from 999. Her relationship with Alice. Alice's relationship with her father, who probably has a relationship to Kay, who is possibly a clone of Sigma. Um, and that father was abducted by Free the Soul, a cult that Dio is a member of, and Free the Soul being connected to the Myrmidons, who are the enemy of Clover and Alice, and Dio likely, you know, being involved with the Myrmidons as well. The only real kind of group we don't know much about is Temyoji, Quark, and Luna. We know a bit about Temyoji and Quark's backgrounds, a little bit, but we don't know quite how it connects to the rest of the members here. And the person we know the least about, I would say, is actually Luna currently. Clues? Hmm. Well, if I could decrypt that code, it might tell us something. But, how can we do that? I told you. We need a key. Without that, it's pointless. What's a key? key, is a, key a key is a key. It allows you to sort of unlock a code. Myrmidons usually use this huge string of numbers as a key. Wait. A long string of numbers? Could that be... Yep, what we got from Dio before. <laughs> Sigma remembers. Just pulls out this random 78153-610988-83809-42419-90551. What the heck? I was almost as surprised as she was. The numbers had just kind of appeared in my mind, and I was saying them before I knew what I was doing. Alice looked at me incredulously, and I stared back. Where did... Wait. Can you say that again? Uh... <laughs> then he rambles it off. That's... <laughs> okay. 198,449,351 to the third power. I mean, Alice is good at math, but that's like... computer level. What? That number you just told me. 
Prime factor decomposition on that number gets you 198 billion, 459 million, 351 to the third power. You're talking about reducing an integer to a series of prime numbers that you multiply together to get it, right? Like, if you have 30, then you get 2 times 3 times 5, right? Exactly. You probably learned that in junior high, right? So you're saying that... 198 billion, 449 million, 351 is a prime. And if you multiply by itself three times, you'd get that long string of numbers. Yes. Don't tell me you just did all of that in your head. There's no way. That's literally impossible. Like, it takes computers so much longer to, to do that than, uh, I mean, I mean, Alice is, I guess, establishing herself as a supercomputer. I did do all of that in my head. Simple mental arithmetic. What? No. No way. That's impossible. I told you. I'm better at math than most people. I mean, me too, but... <laughs> that's not better at math. That's computer. That's computation. I will say, that's true. This is a pretty exceptional universe we're working in. Well, look at you. You just were a huge string of numbers. That seems pretty astounding, too. Touché, touché. Where did you find that number anyway? I... I didn't know what to say. What would I tell her? That it just came to me? Can't tell me, huh? Fine. I'm pretty sure that's the key to the code, though. I know the, the Myrmidons use prime factors for their keys. And there aren't a lot of 25-digit numbers that turn out to be the third power of a prime number. I think there's a very good chance that number you memorized was specifically created by someone. Uh... Could you explain that with small words? Well, look at the prime factors of your number. I think that's our hint for cracking the code. You still don't get it? Try to remember the code we saw in the infirmary. What did it say on the monitor? Um, I think the first row was... All that stuff. And the second row? All that stuff. I think. Then they just repeat. Wow. You've got a pretty impressive memory. <laughs> we could really use someone like you back at the, um... Well, keep going. How do we decode that? You use 198,449,351 to point you to the right letters. How do we do that? Well, the first number is 1, so take the first letter. Next number is 9, so go 9 letters over from the first one, then 8 from that one. Just keep going until you get something. Make sense? I ran over what she'd said in my head. The prime number Alice had given me was that. So what would we get if we picked out letters like she'd explained? The first letter would be C from the top left. Then you'd move 9 to the right, which would give you O. Then 8 more to the right. Eventually we'd get a word. And that word was... Decode the password using it, you'll have six chances to succeed. Fail, and the game is over. The code sheet won't be displayed when you input your answer, so it'd be wise to solve it now. The key is... Alright, I guess I'll write this down. The code sheet won't be displayed when you input your answer. Huh? What's up with that? So it's 198449351. Alright, alright, I hear you, game. Remember, the key is that closing this window will take you to the input screen. Oh, but I can't see the actual code itself? <laughs> Classic. Classic. We love that. 
And are they gonna show me the uh, the memory card? No, not that one. That note. Nope. So I'm actually just expected to remember that page. Can I really not see it? I thought they were talking about the code itself, not the uh, the letter or whatever. So I should have just done it before. I mean, there's nothing to do now, right? I can't look at it. <laughs> it's really not any of these. Like, I mean, I, I get that the, uh, you know, one of the jokes is Sigma has a really good memory, but I certainly didn't think we'd have to do it all there. Is it going to be a password? No? Alright, well, I mean, I guess I'll, I'll pull it up on my phone. I feel like this is just kind of like poor game design. <laughs> All right, we're, well, supposedly there's a wrong end for getting this wrong anyways, so this is really awkward and kind of annoying, but um, we'll just get, in, or we'll see what that wrong end is. And there's our information that I would have loved to, to see. Ugh, I can't figure it out. You what? Are you serious? Hey, get off my back! I don't know, I don't know. What? Ugh, just forget it. I'll figure it out on my own. She stalked off. Wait. I went to follow her, but... Stay where you are. I don't have any use for another brain-dead man. Her voice was unexpectedly furious, and it stopped me cold. She fixed me with an icy glare, then turned and stalked off. I stayed frozen where I was and watched her go. <laughs> it's a really funny game over, to be honest. <laughs> and just like, what a weird situation, just in total, to have this minigame. Like, why can we not access the, the picture of the code, right? That's so weird. So... I guess it's, it's been a while, um, so I'll say that in the next episode we'll actually solve the code, which at this point you guys could probably do on your own, and get hyped about whatever we're going to have to do based on that code um, in the next episode, but that was, um, that was a fun one. Overall, it was really cool to get to learn about Alice and her background, and I'm excited to see where it goes in the future, and we're really, really coming up on, on the end of some of these timelines, so things are definitely tying together. But until the next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.